soybean cyst nematode, which I think is going to be the leading factor in yield reduction from this from this uh, from this year on, especially with the drier stress conditions we've had. This is Dan Bjorkland, agronomist with Landis, and I'm at the 2023 site of the Farnhamville research plot this past season for soybeans. And when we're looking at 2024, and we're, we're looking to get field average 80 to 100 bushel beans because that's my quest for this next season. It all starts here. First of all, we've got a soil test to see what, um, what our nutrient availability is. Uh, and then we've got to go and do some testing to find out what our pest problems are, insects and diseases. Uh, using a company like Pattern Ag, which can de uh, determine what those pest profiles are. And it all starts here to go to 2024. But what I want to do is I want to take a look back at what we found in 2023 uh, for stresses and just discuss in a reaction type video um, what we could have done and how we could have maybe improved the yields that we got because a lot of people did not like their yields in 2023. So let's take a look back and learn from this past season and then let's push ahead for 2024 for 80 to 100 bushel soybean field averages and, and, and make soybeans fun to grow again. Okay, the first thing that I noticed when uh, looking back at last season was that we saw a lot of fields like this with large areas of yellow and it was beyond the normal areas in north central Iowa where we have the high pH situations and iron deficiency. Yeah, there was some of that, but it was much bigger. Now, some of this also was due, some of the symptomology was due to the fact that we had a dry year in some of the corn chemistry, the group 27s, uh, carried over uh, into the beans. But we also saw, uh, when you started digging up the roots, some of this. Very, very heavy uh, areas of uh, soybean cysts protruding from the root systems. And you can see they've got that white to yellow type look. They're a lot smaller than the normal nodules. What was interesting about this root was that there wasn't a lot of nodulation showing that all of the soybean cysts juvenile that were circulating throughout this root system and then eventually ending up protruding out the root as, um, as the female full of eggs, took a lot of energy away from that plant and obviously was re reducing yield. It's like thinking of your circulatory system full of parasites, and then you have the stress uh, of the year. So saw a lot of this, and as a matter of fact, in 90% of the fields that I sampled, I saw cysts, which is pretty amazing because it didn't have to just be in the yellow uh, areas. It could also be in areas where the beans look normal, but they still had uh, quite a bit of cyst damage. Okay, I am looking at cysts. They're small, yellow, lemon-shaped, about the size of a pinhead. These are the uh, females that are protruding outside of outside of the the hair roots. And they're full of about, no, oh, 200 or so eggs that will uh, hatch as soon as they drop off the root and then reinfect. This is very early. We planted these soybeans May 9th, and we're talking about just a month later, June 7th, and we're seeing these cysts. So the next thing that we saw, obviously, if we have uh, the cysts uh, impacting those plants, symptoms like this. This looks like a potassium deficiency, and a lot of times it would just be considered that, but um, it can be associated when you have heavy uh, cyst pressure uh, because the plant is really starving for nutrients and it's just not getting uh, enough nutrition. You get enough of those parasites in the root system, and these are some of the symptom, symptoms that, that you see. So I think you're getting the idea that soybean cyst nematode was a big deal this year, and it's gonna be a big deal in 2024, so we have to manage it. So what else did we see uh, in the 2023 uh, season as we look back? Saw a lot of this. Soybeans were planted in many cases 
early because we had the weather that allowed them to be planted. And then we had some cooler conditions come in and perfect conditions for the fusarium that causes sudden death syndrome to get into those plants. And it gets in early in the life of a soybean plant, but you don't see the damage until August usually. And by that time, the fusarium has been working on the root system and you get this um, toxin that moves up into the plant and starts to destroy some of the leaf tissue. And obviously if you're destroying the photosynthetic part of the plant, it's going to have an impact on, on yield. A lot of people believe that the soybean cyst nematode opens up a lot of areas for reinfection of sudden death syndrome. So if you have these juveniles that are going into the root system, they open up points not only for this fusarium, but for other things like phytophthora root rot, uh, etc. So controlling cysts and keeping cysts from reproducing on soybean roots helps in a whole lot of other areas as well. You know, I spent a lot of the part of the summer looking for different types of pest challenges in both corn and beans. And this year I spent a lot of time with soybeans because we found the cysts so early in June. This was in August, a little bit later in August. And when you get this brown discoloration uh, through the pith area of uh, the soybean plant, very indicative of something we call brown stem rot. And uh, so just another stress, when you think about soybeans now, we've talked about the soybean cyst nematode, we've talked about sudden death syndrome, white mold is another major stress factor for soybeans and impacting yield. And another one that I saw for the first time in Webster County is gall midge. The potential yield that we had with the fertility and nutrients that we had, um, and the environment that we had, minus what we actually got is that yield gap, lost opportunity. And we wanna close that yield gap to the point where we start attaining 80 bushel field averages being, of beans on our way to 100. Because when you make money, it's just more interesting and more fun to grow the crop. So let's take a look back and use that information to look forward to better yields in 2024. Dan Bjorklund, Landis Agronomist, signing off. <laughs>